paragraph. In this case, this paragraph has these settings. This paragraph has these settings. It's only when I click up here on this paragraph that you see the new indent settings that I did for just that paragraph. Wow, kind of neat. So we're going to go ahead and let's say I want to, at the end of this, let's show my paragraph. So here's my paragraph. I'm going to move in front of this paragraph and I'm going to say hit enter. Now watch what happens. I hit enter and look what happens. It automatically does a first line indent. So I'm going to say here is my second paragraph of text. Here we will see what happens with a hanging indent. And it continues on and on and on. See how that works? So you can do this and set your indents in order to kind of grab attention for whatever it is that you're trying to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the paragraph because that sometimes can be a little like, wow, my eyes are popping out here because of all the little symbols there. So this is the indents. Now this is great because indents, these indent markers are used to control again where each line of the text starts and ends. But you can also determine the positioning of a paragraph between the left and right margins by changing its alignment. Now the alignment, if you notice, is up here. You can align the text to the left, you can center the text, you can align it to the right, or you can justify it. Let's take a look at each one of these. Now by default, the way the template is set up, you will find that your uh, left alignment is the one that is chosen. Most people just find that they like to align text to the left. That's pretty standard on most business letters and, and reports and things like that. And then you can uh, play around with the indents to kind of make it look a little different. But let's say I'll click in here on this paragraph and I'm going to say I want this paragraph to align the text to the right. So when I click on that, you'll notice that all of a sudden it bumps everything over and now everything aligns over here to this margin or to this indent, the right indent that I have. Look at that. So now you kind of have this jagged edge on the left, but yet you have a nice smooth area over here where everything is perfectly lined up on the right hand side. Now of course I can also go in and click on the center, which will center the text. When I do that, it now starts your text at the middle between the left and right margin and then it spreads out to the left and to the right until you cover all the areas and see down here you get a good example where if you start typing and now let's say I want to add many many see how it's splitting out and the uh, the the text goes to the left and the right evenly because you're centering the text and if I take away the text it'll it'll show the same thing so this is the alignment now also don't forget justified. Now justify means you want to align each line and create even left and right edges. So you want a nice left edge and you want a nice right edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on justify and you're going to see something kind of interesting. The way that it enables this to do it is it might add a little bit more space here, maybe a little bit more spacing between the characters to make sure that the left and the right aligns. The only time it doesn't is where you obviously don't have enough text to approach the edge and then it will default to a left alignment. So you notice this all aligns over to the left and not to the right. That's the way it works with justification. Now, are you ready for something really, really cool? You might say to yourself, well, I want to start, instead of starting typing text, I want to create a new paragraph of text and I want to be able to, you know, start it somewhere else. So I'm going to go down here to anywhere in the blank, uh, blank area. And so if you come out down here, so I'm down here in the blank area. Look at the, the 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 stuff to the side of my cursor. Notice how that shows up is kind of like a left alignment. Watch what happens when I roll to the middle. See how the text shows up, the little symbol down here. Look underneath my cursor. See it? It aligns to the center, or to, or I can go all the way over here to the right. What does that mean? Watch this. I'm going to go to the center. I double click and I automatically start off center justified. Isn't that cool? I just I just get excited about it. I know weird things, but I think that's really neat. And it saves you time instead of coming over here and let's say you just typed here and you go, oh, I want this centered. So I start typing some text 
and then go, okay, now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click here in the t- center of the text. Now, you can do that. That's fine. You can. But I just think I love the little shortcuts that I get in Word 2007, and that is one of those. So this is the click and type feature is what they call this if you read it in, in a book. So it's, it's it, you know kind of neat uh, to be able to do that. I'll go ahead and delete this. So there we see now how we can set up our margins or excuse me, our alignment to the margins, and then also how we can utilize the indents. These are ways for us to set up the way the text, the paragraph works. Now, I got something else for you that's kind of cool. Let's take a look at how we can go in and change where if I, let's say I want to have text stop here without changing an indent, but I don't want to use the hard carriage return. What happens if I want to stop it right here? What can I do? Well, I can add a text wrap, or what they call a soft carriage return. Now, this is a great way to get a line break. A line break means that instead of having a carriage return, so I'll turn on the paragraph formatting. Notice it goes ahead and wraps, but let's say I want to have a line break right here. Well, the way to do that is we're going to have to go and either go to page layout, where we go to page layout, and then what we're going to do is we can then come over here and notice where here we have our insert page and section breaks we can come down here and we can use text wrapping to do this now this is the long drawn out way to do it the other way to do it is just simply place your cursor hit the shift key hold it down and hit enter now watch what happens I've inserted a line break see the little bent arrow that means that this is just a line break I inserted a line break that was shift and enter and so it breaks the line down notice it does it before the indent and there is no hard carriage return there is no paragraph marking which means now this is still considered this is still a part of this paragraph all I've done is insert a line break now this is good if you want to add formatting to the whole paragraph but yet you want to control where the lines break you can hit a shift enter so just a little neat feature there we'll go ahead and uh, back it up right there so that's just something that we can see here as part of our paragraph formatting Another way that we can kind of adjust the way our paragraphs look is the spacing between the text within a paragraph as well as the spacing between your paragraphs. So what I'm going to do is first off take a look at how we increase the spacing. Now right now uh, the way the style is set up and we'll talk about styles a little bit later on is you'll notice it says no spacing b- between. Well, there isn't. There's just a little bit of, uh, you know, kerning between the two characters here. So what I can do is come up here to line spacing. So remember, it says you can also customize the amount between your before and after paragraph. So we can do that too. What I can do is click on the down arrow and then choose what kind of spacing I want in between my particular par- in, in my particular paragraph. So if I go to 1.5, you'll notice that now I have one and a half instead of just one line between it. Or I can come back up here and say, no, I want it for three. Look at that, three line spaces in between that. Or I can just come back and say, no, I just want the standard one. And I can click there too. So that gives us the ability. Now notice it only affects the text in the body. It doesn't affect the lines between a paragraph. Now how does that look? Well to do that we need to go into the paragraph dialog box and we do that either by adding space before paragraph or after by clicking on it and it will go ahead and do it automatically there and so you can remove the space before paragraph but you can go right here to the paragraph dialog box and when we click on that you're going to see some of the same things that we saw in our uh, u- just utilizing our um, toolbars in our horizontal ruler. See, here's the indentation. We have our left indent is one inch, our right is 0.81 inches. So you can set these here as well. You can also mirror the indent. So whatever the left is, that's what the right is. So if I click on that, you can notice it'll allow you to do that but uh, inside and outside and mirroring the indents. So in the, they call it the inside-outside. You can also do the special. Here's where we see that our hanging indent is 0.25. Our first line is also 0.25. Or you can say there is no special indents. That means you don't have any hanging indents. But, you know, in our case, we went ahead and had that set up the way that we did. So we want to do that half an inch for the hanging and the first and it allows you to preview it right down here so you don't have to worry about like okay well what's that going to look like how's that working that just shows you right down here 
Now spacing. Here's where we see not only the line spacing, which is the single, you can do the one and a half, double at least, exactly. You can do multiple different line spacings. It's, it's really neat how you can do that. But here, where it says before and after, you can change how much spacing occurs between your uh, your paragraphs. In other words, how much spacing do you want before a paragraph and how much spacing do you want after a paragraph? Now that's kind of fun. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and down here. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the, the paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this paragraph and I'm going to insert something. So all I need to do is hit a backspace and get back there. Now once I've done that, now watch what's going to happen when I change the, what happens before and after a particular uh, space. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here now and I'm going to go click on my paragraph. I'm going to come down here and say I want 12 points before and 12 points after. Now notice it says don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. Now this is going to help you when you might want to use certain styles be, and, and use them on multiple paragraphs. Well you're not going to want to add any space because within the style itself will usually have, as we're going to see, um, it's going to have its own settings and you're not going to want to add more space to the already setting space of the style. That's kind of like doubling up. So you can say that. Well if I have the same style I don't want to do that. So we go ahead and we click OK, right? Now what's, watch what happens when I hit enter here. I hit enter and bada bing bada boom, look at that. Here is space before and space after. Now watch what happens when I take the paragraph formatting off and or hide it. You'll see that right here obviously I can place my cursor because here's a, a paragraph here. But notice if I come here I can't click anywhere in this white space. Now if I'm just coming onto this letter and I'm looking at it I might say well Someone must have hit a carriage return. Why can't I come down here and, and do anything? Aha! The, what probably has happened is you need to turn on your paragraph markings and you'll see that the paragraph goes boom and this is the next paragraph. So there's obviously space been inserted here. So if you ever wonder, well, why is that? What's going on here? Well, remember, you might be using some of these styles that have something built in. So what I would do is if I see this go, oh, I get it. There must be spacing between it. So what I'll do is I'll come up here. I'll look and sure enough, there's spacing before and there's after. And so what I can do is I can say, well, I don't want any spacing before and after my paragraphs. I hit zero, zero. I click OK. And now you'll notice that we have the paragraph. There is none. So I can come over here and do the same thing. Select you zero, zero, click OK, and now for both paragraphs there is no spacing before and after. And now I can click in between if I need to. If I take the paragraph, if I click now in the white space, I'll say, ah, see, there's a separate paragraph there. I know, it might be a little confusing, but I show this to people because I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, Chris, I can't format this right. There's, there's space between the paragraphs. I don't want the space. How do I get rid of this? I can't carriage return. Even if I come back here, you know, it'll take it instead of moving it up one line, it takes it to the end of the paragraph. What's going on? That's what's going on. Check to see if there's spacing before and after. Now, one final thing we want to show you is what if I want to add and, and kind of grab attention. For example, I want to grab attention around this paragraph. So Jeremy's going to look at this. He'll go like, ooh, wow, this is very important right here. But what if I want to draw attention here? What I can do is I can add border and shading around a paragraph. Pretty cool, huh? So what I can do is come up here, and right underneath here, if I click on this, you'll notice on the drop-down arrow, I can add borders by simply choosing outside borders, inside horizontal borders, or I can come down to the dialog box of borders and shading. That's what I typically do, because watch what happens. Boom. I get the entire dialog box, which allows me to do things for all my borders. I can do automatic. Now, you can do a lot of different things. You can say no border, which shows you there's none. You can apply a box around it, which will just add lines all the way around it. Or my favorite is the drop shadow. What that does is it adds a box, and then it adds, um, it adds a drop shadow right here. Pretty neat. 
Now, of course, I can click on the options here, and I can add where I want this to be, the border and shading options. One point on the top, one point on the bottom, on the left and right, four point to kind of show how that works. So I have some options. Those are your advanced options on it. 